I'm going to now show you another trace that works extremely well when fishing in kelp over rock beds, places where your sinker does get stuck quite a lot. This trace that I'm doing at the moment is more for your spotted gullies, your um, hound sharks, stuff like that. Um, it works very, very well in Namibia. Basically what we require, some Kingfisher nylon, 25 kilo. It's basically used in our sinker trace, our sinker snooting. It needs to be light, break off if you do get caught. But this trace is designed in such a way that you don't lose your sinker. You can use a grapple, you can use a cone, you can use a teardrop, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using a grapnel. You need three swivels, power swivels, number three if you like, that's what I prefer. 8 -o or 9 -o tuna circle hooks, um, preferably silver in colour or black, it doesn't really make a difference depending on the bait that you're going to be using. Fluorocarbon. This is a triple fish fluorocarbon, one mil. And of course, our kingfisher dangles. Floating or non-floating doesn't really make a difference. It's up to you, depending on what fish species you're fishing for. Okay, start off. Let's just clear the table a bit. I'll just move all these away. Okay, sinker snooting. Let's start with that. short piece of kingfisher nylon. Okay, so basically figure of eight around it. One, two, three. Lubricate. Slide down. This trace also works very well down in Cape Reef when you're fishing for brasher or muscle cracker as they call it down there, steernies. Um, if you're fishing over beach area and you need a bit of giving it. It's silver stem brush by the way. Um, swivel. And we make it quite short. There we go. Uh, where's my mustard scissors? Just cut it off nice and neatly. Just make sure the knot's tight, just do that. Okay, so there's our sinker with our swivel on. We're then going to take our fluorocarbon. I've already cut a piece here. There we go, okay. Snell our mustard 8 or 9 depending on the size of the fish species that you're fishing for. And the easiest way to do it, especially with fluorocarbon, one, two, three times around, pretty much like that. Take it off your finger, take the tag end and slide the tag end through the actual um, line, like so. And then what you do is you actually put your fingers in here and you start pulling and you'll find it forms your figure of eight. Make sure when you do it that you don't pull this one over the eye of the actual hook. So that's basically what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to pull tight quickly. There we go. It's now formed its figure of eight over the actual uh, back of the hook there. We now pull the fluorocarbon all the way down. Slide it to where you want it to be. Get your pliers and pull the knot tight. Remember it's fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon. The knots need to be pulled tight, otherwise it will undo itself. Cut it off as close as we can. So there's our hook snooting, depending on what length you want it to be. I'm going to make this one about 40 to 50 centimeters in length. So I'm just going to cut it over here. Take my swivel. And again, all I'm going to do is a figure of eight. One, two, three. Open it up, put your fingers or your hands inside there. Put the tag end back through it. And there we go, there's your figure of eight forming. Lubricate, you don't want to burn the line. Pull reasonably tight, and then all I do is I just slide it down. So slide it down to the end there. Then I take my hook, stick it inside like that. 
and actually hold it and pull the line as tight as you can so the knot actually pulls tight. Making sure the hook does not slip and there we go. You can see how tight that knot has actually become over there. It's pulled up nice and tightly. Cut off the tag end. There we go, it's about 40 to 50 centimeters in length. Okay, so I'll just leave that there for the time being. Take another piece of one mil fluorocarbon. If you're worried about sharks or say a cow shark or something like that, you could make that out of wire if you'd like. Doesn't really make a difference. And like I said before, there's no rules to this trace as far as what you're going to use it for. It's just a very underrated trace. Not many people use it or know about it. Okay, simply attach my fluorocarbon leader one, two, three times around again. And open it up. There's your figure of eight. And we just slide it down. I know in Namibia they like to use tennis racket string for this part of it and wire just in case there's cow sharks around on that bite trace part. But if they're fishing strictly for spot keys and that, they'll go this route. We take our next swivel and all we do is stick the swivel on the line, slide it down. Take our sinker and we're going to form our figure of eight onto the sinker part. One, two, three times. Go back through. Again, there's our figure of eight. Use this fluorocarbon. Pull the knot reasonably tight and slide down and make sure the knot is tight. Cut the tag end off. And basically this is what the trace is looking like at the moment. This little tag end, yeah, I'm going to cut down a bit. You can add a bead over here if you want to protect your knots, it's up to you. But so far, this is what the trace is actually looking like. Okay, so basically slides all the way to the sinker if you see that so it gives your spotty enough time to turn around and move off with your bait before the sinker actually sets on the circle hook okay for long distance casting what they do is we take one of these let's open it quickly Right there. Basically what we do is we take our circle lock through the eye like that of the heat shrink. We then take our chocker or mullet or mackerel, place it around it to form our bait. That then becomes our clip to clip on so we can throw for. That's the length of the trace when it comes to actually casting. So that would be the standard length for casting purposes. And of course, what it allows you to do when you're fishing in the kelp is if you get a bite, this runs all the way along, and then of course it gets picked up, and you can fight your fish without your sinker coming in contact with either the kelp, or it has less line that can get caught around the kelp compared to the standard drop that we normally use. And also if you're fishing over rocky ledges as well, you've got less chance of the sinker actually getting caught because you're elevated, obviously, when you're holding your rod up high. So basically, that's the system, the seesaw trace system. Okay. So it gives your fish more than ample time to take the bait in before he actually gets hooked with either the grapnel sinker, cone sinker, or the teardrop. But that's basically what it looks like and like I said before it's very easy to cast there's the length guys
and yes it is a seesaw so your sinker comes right up the fish is at the bottom you're holding your rod up high and it doesn't get tangled up anywhere in the kelp rocks weed if there's a lot of weed around 